Welcome to House Common Blood, where strangers are family. Every episode contains graphic content, including, but not limited to, copious amounts of blood, unnecessary cursing, death of all ages, be they infants or mortals, fantasy drug use, nudity, mentions of sex, and sound effects of various qualities. Cannot stress enough that this is mature content with adult themes. You have been warned. Anyone got a light? Alright, welcome to House Calm Blood. I'm your DM and host, Gray. We run a uh, D&D 5e uh, homebrew campaign where sentient calamities will destroy the world with the help of Genasi, that disgusting race. I'm joined here with our players, Mega. Good thing I'm not one of those. Uh, <laughs> okay. The G word. But, uh, you know, I am Mega, and I play Eddie, the Triton Otter Boy Bastard class. And I also play Eddie, and sometimes I play other characters with similar names, just to torment Grey. Yeah, it fucking sucks, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it, because it is the worst thing to try to describe to another player, or in a narrative, or in general. Followed by... Our good girl, Nita. Nita, what's your opinions on Genasi? Okay. They're cool. I don't respect your opinion. Who the hell do you play? Hi there. I play uh, Aaliyah Oblak, uh, a human cleric sorcerer. So, there. Alright. And I think we uh, covered all the players that matter. They're playing uh, justifiable races. Wow. Cupcake would be so upset you said that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, I, I do miss our little cupcake. I feel like I'm forgetting something. No, you didn't forget anything. You're okay. Okay. Oh, Moo! Yes, yes, Moo. Um, what, what the fuck are you playing? I am playing a disgusting, horrible, grotesque fire genasi that lights people on fire that is an alchemist. Mmm. It's very good to hear. Um. So, last session, our good girl, Aluya, was looking into a silver pool. It's a uh, pool that can uh, scry into uh, the future, the past of a uh, location. And she decided to look upon a day in the past. Uh, one day that brought her a lot of confusion and strife. Uh, two years prior, she looked into the pool on a day where uh, children, or not children, I keep wanting to say children, students she was uh, looking after were massacred. And she learned that a changeling had a hand in this massacre uh the only clues that she could uh grasp from the situation is the hill uh hill heraldry of a uh diamond a lion and a emerald ring on this uh person's finger and along with uh a list of students with uh, dates far in the future and crimes that people aren't aware of. Other than that, uh, 
Seer fell in love. Eddie thought it was a toxic relationship and naturally killed the love interest. You dick. <laughs> and I, and I feel like that uh, just about covers what happened last session. Do, am I forgetting anything here? Sorry, Eddie has his own OTP. Uh... <laughs> Who does Eddie ship? <laughs> well, obviously the relationship that has sparks. There you go. <laughs> That's good. All right. We ready to jump in here? Well, I know nobody's getting jumped, so... Ha 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 Funny joke. Anyways. Uh, Seer, you kind of took over the scene last time, so let's uh, finish off uh, where we left off. You were... Oh, it's cute that you think Seer's going to be able to finish off. <laughs> Aluya. You were running down in the hallway, past the bloody footsteps. And as you ran, the smell of uh, burning flesh filled your nostrils. And again, with the relative pain that you just revisited, that horrific event of burnt flesh of the students you you walked into it, this was horrifying it, it sent sent you running you, you ran down the hallways you got halfway through until you seen a big old wood man blocking your path get give me a little bit of insight on what Aluya was is thinking how she's acting any fidgets please paint the scene for me she, she's running, she's crying, tears are just coming down her face. The events of that day and getting those answers have completely overwhelmed her. It's a sickening sensation and she just smashes into Mavette and as she does, she looks at him and just completely barfs all <laughs> over him. <laughs> All right, you know what? For the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to make him do a dexterity check. I'm going to say it's 13. That'll be fine. He has an ungodly low dexterity. What the hell is wrong with him? Um, right. Thirteen or higher. And that's a 12, so you barf all over him. <laughs> yeah, she starts to tear. She's got snot bubbles mixed with a little vomit coming out of her nose. It's oh trickling out her mouth. It's like this hyperventilating. Is... I'm so sorry. Uh, my vet, I'm so sorry. She just backs off and just kind of goes into like a fetal position on the floor. Just rocking herself. Sierra, you see your ally in a ca uh, catatonic state, as well as uh, a friendly uh, woodman uh, standing at the top of the staircase on top of a yellow rug in this narrow dungeon hallway. What do you do? The smell might be a little overwhelming. The smell like shit. I mean, I mean, it's not the worst things I've smelled. Let's be real. But also, I'm just trying to read these notes I have. I have written for yesterday, or and stuff like that. Ah, oh, sadly, Seer would get up and do what they usually do. Mm -hmm. They will help Louie out in a sense of like they don't say anything they kind of just like if they're in this like canatonic like they just experience a horrific moment kind of situation mm -hmm. we we'll give them a nice pat <laughs> and then just simply ask would you like me to get you something to drink you have like a hanky or something i just it's all over my face it's more on my vet but it's on my face too <laughs> Uh, Seer so basically just 
I think we'll go through their bag. Slowly, like, just you just hear this <laughs> plain clean of stuff. And what they will do is they will pull out a, well, in this case, another sack. I wish okay. I had hankies, but I don't. Right. Um, no problem. Oh, I could fix this myself. Uh, hold on. And she'll just press the digitation <laughs> her face, but she'll forget about Malvet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't seem bothered by it. it it seems like it was a confusing custom for for humans so he accepts it <laughs> but yeah you guys are alone in this hallway without your poor otter friend what do you guys do I got my answer, as you know. I mean, congratulations, then. It but means, it... then. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. Just more questions to be asked, Ridley. Well, at least now you have a direction. My case, it was not a pleasant experience. I didn't really learn much. I just learned more about myself. Well, it would be tough to prove my innocence. Extremely. Yeah, and I feel like, uh, Aluya, you just like hear that echoing of, uh, I believe his name was Stonefist, correct? The dwarf? Yes, correct. Uh, you, you hear the echoing of Stonefist. Get out! And your pocket's a bit more heavy. She'll just kind of uh, pass her hand slowly across it and just moves it away quickly. Mm-hmm. As you feel over the bulge. Mind uh, telling everyone, like, uh, what memento you have? I can't remember the name of it. Um, it was the, the uh, it's a little wooden troll figure of twins. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Moo, help me out here. They're the twins. Tat and Chernel. Yeah. What was that? Satin and Chanel. Satin and Chanel. Yes. No, um, <laughs> from going through her memories, uh, she has unlocked a uh, a power within these dolls, and they are now a magic item. <laughs> um, it's up to you, Leah, if you want to share it now or share it during combat. It. It doesn't matter to me. I'll I'll share it when it's relevant. It's just kind of awkward here. I got this yeah. thing it's so cool. I just vomited, but and <laughs> cried. I can't think of a more relevant moment to bring it up than uh, being in uh, shell shock of uh, memories to do with that day. But uh, that aside, <laughs> you're cleaning yourself up. You're standing up. What do you guys do? Um, we forgot Eddie. Well, I ran away. I didn't mean to. Uh, we should go back. No need to apologize. They were busy killing something that I was interested in. You're still sour yeah. about that. Even That's though why the I, I phrased out. it like that. Yeah. Like a chip. A treasure, or a book, or something. Ah, uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yep, yep, I don't want to talk about my thing either. I think we can move on. Hmm. I don't know, Seer. 
That response didn't set well with you. Are you not wanting to talk about it because of a darker nature? <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, it was like reliving the day and seeing all of their faces again and seeing the aftermath and smelling the aftermath. It, it was a lot. But mm. if you want to take my mind off of it, we can talk about your thing, you know? <laughs> I mean, if I speak about it, it's not as groundbreaking as yours. We don't know. Just We can speak it out into the universe. <laughs> I mean, if you know, does that mean then you'd be having a strange opinion upon things? Mm, or maybe knowing is freeing. I mean, the big thing, though, is that my case is not like, oh, hey, this is a deep, dark secret. This is very much more of like a, huh. I just remembered something about myself. Oh. But oh, not like a, oh, my God, my world is shattering. Like yours. More like, now nah, I'm more aware. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's something juicy, like you may spill the tea, and then maybe it will be in a better mood for me. You want me to tell you just to put you in a better mood? No, I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> um, you know, I to... don't believe that. <laughs> just to put it in there. As uh, here. Like, are you actively even thinking about anything of yourself, or is the mere thought of dredging up any memories, like... <laughs> uh, it's the mere thought of, like, I yeah. just pulled a memory out. What the fuck? Yeah. I going to say, like, at, at most you feel hollow. And this recent uh, run-in with uh, a succubus did not uh, leave a good taste in your mouth. And... Uh, there's lingering feelings of uh, jeal uh, jealousy well past uh, the uh, charm's uh, end effect and even a longing for a lover long past. So you keep that in mind, that vitriol, that turmoil as you speak to Aluya who's breaking down. I, I think it's just that feeling that I, I know this sounds sick, this sounds fucked up, but it, it's that kind of feeling that sociopaths have of, oh, you, you think you're going through a, a troubling time? Well, I went through worse, and I still stood up, yet you're on the floor kind of feeling. But please, go on. Well, if it's too much for you, I won't force you at your own pace, I suppose. But, um... I just feel like if I say it, you'd be very uncomfortable. Well, after all this time, being around you, not having hate for you, the, the tiny bit of a butt hurt, you judging me that way, I wouldn't judge you that way. But, at your own pace. I think it's the close nature that's the issue. I'll tell you another time. Let's go find our otter boy. Right. Alright, at that forceful cut, uh, Eddie, it's been about ten minutes since they left. Uh, what have you been doing to keep yourself busy here? <clears throat> so, uh, I think he's just been... Uh... Uh, but I guess like originally he just would have been finishing up like uh, you know like that smoke to kind of relax a bit mm. it's like uh, although I think eventually he would get curious as to like uh, 
uh, where Mr. Petkins had gone with his new mirror. So uh, <laughs> he kind of just like wandered off. Yep. You see, like, uh, uh, Peckins is uh, leaning against uh, the wall, looking at his uh, reflection. And, um, again, th- this might be a l- little too far out there, but have you guys ever seen, like, a-, a chicken held in the air and, like, people rotating the body and it remains in place? It- it's that kind of thing where, like, his body's moving, like, with the mirror, but his head staying in place. Because his eyes are at a uh, weird angle here. And uh, he, he looks up as you uh, walk into uh, the hallway. And uh, I, I think uh, what he uh, says is... What do you think you're doing? I mean, look at the time. It's nearly nightfall. What have you accomplished? Dumb bird. Uh, hey, little dude, just, uh, just kind of waiting on, I guess, little dude and Berlui- Berluia to get back. <laughs> All you do is waste time, waste time. Such a disappointment. And... Yeah, uh, click, clicks it shut and shutters a little bit. I mean, I'd ask if you want a hit, but I don't know. Can you smoke with that beak? Thinks about for a second. Walks up to you. Holds out like a, a feather for it? A wing? Holds out a wing for it. It's like a <clears throat> like a hands over the uh, the bait pen. <laughs> hmm. yeah, holds over bait pen. S- smokes out of it, and we see like it go uh, again. It- it's like uh, having yeah, like a. Uh, a typical bowl piece with uh, not covering the choke. So we see like a little bit of smoke go through like uh, the the nostrils, the, the holes in, in the beak. And he tries to breathe it in. Uh, failed at it the first time. Second time he covers his nose, does a, well, his equivalent of a nose. Uh, he covers up the holes in his beak takes a big inhale and honestly I kind of want to do a constitution check for this have a look here okay so with Mr. Peckins taking a hit uh yeah no is I would say like uh, you've seen bigger clouds but it was a pretty decent one for a first attempt um, he smokes up a bit of the hallway, and would you remind the audience, Eddie, like uh, one of the first effects of your drug? So, so you start to uh, feel uh, like a many of your senses start feeling like uh, extra sensitive, like uh, like colors are a bit more vivid. Um, like uh, you can even like like start like more feeling your clothes. Uh, mm. It's like it's just like you know like a, like a, just a lot of like your your sensory perception is like uh, enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> and I think like he's feeling up his uh, cape a bit, really attached to the feeling of velvet as or i shouldn't say velvet like cotton like feeling up his uh, cotton cape and i think he says something along the lines of uh i suppose every bird has his day <laughs> and just feeling the cape feeling the cape 
a chassis, bruh. It gets, like, even trippier the more you use it. Cocks his head at you a bit. You mean to tell me that there's more? Well then, speak on. What do you have to say for yourself? So, well, like, if you do it enough, like, like, not only does it, like, feel even better, but, like, you can also, like, 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 start getting into people's minds, you know? Like, really get to know people. I think you... Give me an insight check. And you got, let's see, da, 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 da. Uh, Ooh, just a six. six. Um, I would say with a six, because it's not relatively a high check, but I'm not going to give you like uh, the the deep insight here. Um, you get a feeling that is a common uh, concern with this. Um, uh, he seems torn at one issue. That That's what I'll give you. Uh, torn at one issue, and I won't give you the other side of it. Um, he is not that interested in completely, like, a, you know... A, a re repeat it one more time. It was communication and, like, sharing your secrets or, like, a, a repeat for well, me no, one more he, time. Just, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, getting, uh, like, get inside someone's head, really get to yeah. know them. Yeah, there we go. Um, it's like a, a person being hesitant on really getting to know the other person. Not the secret part. Just really getting to know the other person. But the other issue that he's like uh, putting on the other side of the scale, you don't know. Something makes him want to do it. You just don't know the root of what makes him want to do it. But you know what's making him hesitant. Uh, oh, I went up very, like, too hard about the, the whole in-the-head thing. Like, it really only happens if you're, like, doing it with, like, other people. But I... It's just like a... Go ahead. Fin finish up. But otherwise, it's just like a, a real good time. Have you ever tasted purple? <laughs> I demand to talk to you. They're like, aren't we talking right now? Shakes his head. Oh, like, you want to talk about it, but like, Later. Shakes his head. <laughs> you want to talk about it now? And he taps his head. And I feel like uh, when, when you say now, uh, the girls uh, come around the corner here as we uh, meet up our time frames. Move your tokens. Hold on, I'm typing. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's up to you whether you want to pursue that more or if uh, you feel as though like uh, there's more to do at this moment. Or if the other party members have uh, any questions or want to engage on this conversation. Really, ball's in the air. It's 
Uh, actually, I guess I'll do this real quick. Uh, I would say, like, is it actually noticeable that uh, uh, that I'm hearing them walk in, or? Yeah, they're not stealthing. Like, you could hear them walking a mile away. Especially Luya. You kidding me? Heavy armor? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Duh. Thunk, 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 thunk. Heavy footed. Like an elephant. Mm -hmm. Two left feet. From an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Big feet. So uh, I think, actually, I think Eddie would be just like uh, chill enough to just like start continuing for a bit. It's okay. Like, uh, uh, like, what do you want to know? It's not about what I know. It's about what you know. Tell me, what's in that bird brain of yours? Uh, well, I guess, like, lots of stuff. Guess I'm, like, always thinking about something. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. And Maybe not. I think I think to hammer in the point, he repeats that a couple more times in the exact same inflection and tone. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Uh, oh, did you like... Did you want to smoke together and see what happens? Nods his head. Oh. Like, uh, looks around a bit. Uh, there has to be, like, a good room for it. Like, it needs to be, like, a room that you can, like, seal up for a bit. You know what I mean? Repeat after me. I understand. So, oh, yeah. kind of like you see, Seer. <laughs> I caught them. <laughs> and I was able to get them to relax a little bit. I'm sorry, I ran away like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bitch. Um, is... I don't want to say it. It's eliminated, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're gone. Who's gone? Well, I guess like to put it I guess like to put it in a different way like the soul sucking monster is gone the smell of burning meat in flesh is still in the air guys <laughs> just to really put it out there I don't know my vet's behind me he stinks it's like they're <laughs> balancing each other out Maple syrup and burnt flesh. Um, I'm not sure which yeah. one's more powerful. Vomit. <laughs> Vomit. There you go. Well, with business done there, hesitates to say the next thing. Shall we proceed forward? Which way's forward? I basically point to 
I basically point to like two doors and mean like we could either go to the door that we see now or the door that was just around the corner. Yep. There's one to the north, one to the west, and one to the south where Peckins is. It is dealer's choice where you guys want to go. Um, I can say with confidence with the north room, you didn't see anything uh, incredibly dangerous from a cursory glance because there wasn't a door. It's just an opening. If I had to pick a direction, I probably would check these doors over here. This here kind of like takes a step forward, following the footprints. Hmm. Okay. I got your six here. Mm hmm. Holds back a comment they wanted to say immediate and be like, all right. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, when I approach the door, Gray, I just want to check if there's anything off with the door. Yeah, you uh, go to the door, and there is a large, bloody handprint around the, uh... Yeah, just to clarify, it's one of those uh, door uh, D-shaped door handles, you know what I'm talking about? That's vertical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you see, like, uh, a bloody imprint, like, uh... Uh, stuck onto uh, the metal of that bar and you see like unnatural scrapes and uh, cuts on the uh, sides of the door like it was opened without a shred of kindness so violently that this stone door is uh, all sorts of fucked up but it is still functional I would like to investigate how the door opens by just a D-shaped thing. They can see her, we'll grab it, but they're not going to, like, open it blindly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do me investigation, then. I'm great at the... Mm-hmm. Roll 20, don't be slow. It will be. I'm um, a 19. Hmm. All right. So with the 19, you see it's one of those barn door kind of slides. Um, it, yeah, it, it's particularly weird, dude. Uh, assume in a uh, natural dungeon this kind of uh, construction would be impossible but you think with uh, Owen's magic he wanted to uh, do unorthodox and uh, just visually interesting things such as like a stone door sliding into stone and it looks like uh, if you were to slide it all the way like, uh, it would almost become flush with the wall. After that, you would not understand how to bring it back out, but it, it seems very, very strange and complicated. I try to explain it to Aluya, but I'll basically end it in a phrase. So, want me to open it? Mm -hmm. I have a firm grip on this. Maybe use two hands for it. All right, fair. I'll make sure to, you know, place my thumbs in the proper position. Mm -hmm. All right. So you open the door. You can open it. Um, I might as well. Mm hmm. Let's see. So, you slide the door into the wall, and we hear a nice click as you see a carpet lay before you, going straight west. 
until you see another door. This re rectangular room goes to the north and south. About 40 feet in length. You see a large curtain going from the north to the south. Pure yellow. Inside this room, you see all sorts of exotic plants and an unnatural daylight stemming from floating orbs of light that dance in the air. The smell of regents and plants, that earthy game, yeah, that earthy and medical smell just overpowers your nose to the point of wrinkling. What's disturbing about this greenhouse is the amount of dirt and wood shrapnel you see on the ground. As it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, places to uh, put uh, pot plants are just destroyed. You see footprints going from the door to the north. And that's all you see from just peering within the room. What do you do? Well, this room seems friendly. Um, shall we take the rest of the group? I think it would be a good choice to have backup. All right. I mm. mean, if you're in. I wonder if the little dude found another trap. <laughs> Peckins just nods his head. Well, carry on. Proceeds to lock forward. Okay. Same, same as everybody else. Make sure you move your tokens when exploring. Um, uh, same with you, Eddie, please. if you want to assist or go with the girls. Well, um, the joke is that they haven't said anything yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, oh. Eddie, <laughs> come here. Oh, good. They're still alive. <laughs> um, the, the lasagna noodles, are they like barriers or can we walk on them? The lasagna noodles are curtains and yes, you can go through them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I said, yellow curtains. <laughs> Hooray oh. for lasagna. Okay. Yes, uh, from the Italian restaurant, you see that there is a throne to the north. And to the throne of the north, let me reveal what is sitting on the throne. As you look to the north, you see a creature with blue moss draping from its wooden body. Its face is similar to uh, the beast from Beauty and the Beast or uh, like any kind of rendition of a uh, chimera uh, with uh, two horns and uh, beady eyes and just four sharp canines, two on the top, two on the bottom. Its claws are scraping at the makeshift throne that it's made of wood and uh, bark. Its moss seeps into the ground and to its right, to uh, the west on this map, you guys see Venus flytraps as they begin to chomp at the air as the creature feeds it meat and its eyes glare at you all as you walk in and its eyes finally rest towards seer the person leading the group what business do you have here in my domain it's closer just scraping at the 
armrest of the throne. Well, besides investigating areas that might be able to help us in our endeavors, trying to get to know the locals and all that stuff. Or, in other words, we're just exploring an area that we need to investigate. Um, unless, Eddie, you want to add a phrase to that. I'm not great with talking. Yeah, have you, like, seen a big skeleton anywhere? At that, like, uh, its claws sink into the throne. And his head tilts down, eyes looking upward at you. You mean to tell me that you're explorers, yet you look for the skeleton? Yes. Sir? Ma'am? Why? Well, we had, like, a friend that lost his head, and we're trying to get him a new one. <laughs> the motes of red light burn even more brightly as he's chucking another hunk of meat at his Venus flytrap. You mean to tell me that you are looking for the skeleton to aid a headless friend? In yeah, a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, you described that pretty well. Why? Why would I even let you near it? Because you're a nice, chill dude. And he stands up. <laughs> I have guarded this skeleton for years, years upon years, since the first blossoming, blossoming of the great oak. I have been here before you were a twinkle in your dad's eye. Why? Would I let you near the skeleton? No vacation time for you? Being here all this time? Working? Don't you have like a break? Did you not even come here with Melora's blessing? Um... <laughs> Well, um, Eddie, did we come here with Melora's blessing? <laughs> this overworked individual would like to know. I mean, like, I've been told from birth I'm pretty blessed. Because I don't think it's worth the history check. Hashtag blessed. Um, just to remind the party, Melora is the dryad of uh, the Nisrot forest, the queen of the forest. And you guys been uh, told on a few occasions that uh, everything within this territory is hers, and especially the uh, grave of ill omens, which is... Uh, where the skeleton lies. So, what I see is ignorant explorers seeking the skeleton because of their own greed, without even the queen's blessing. Well, Am no, I hearing on, that um, right? 
well boy if only we had like a three person to have this conversation with to help us um yes there would be an assistance with the persuasion but too bad that's not an option You're shit out of luck. <laughs> so I we can... <laughs> mean no disrespect. Surely. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, he's on a dais. It's a stone dais, and uh, the throne is makeshift out of wood. Seems like uh, the, the throne is something he made. On top of uh, the dais. You see a magic uh, a circle underneath it. Or I shouldn't say a magic circle. That'd be misleading. Uh, uh, just uh, magical sigils uh, etched in chalk. And to his uh, right, you do see a flung table. And uh, Seer, like, you can really smell the, uh, the medical solutions mixing together. It seems like... Uh, the dais was uh, used as a uh, a uh, to uh, hold his uh, uh, medical lab. Essentially, that got thrown to the side. Mm. I see the things connecting now. Mm. This and he motions his arm across the room is a front to Melora. The wizard has scarred this land and he seeks a skeleton as he bites the word that you guys uh, said at the beginning. For nefarious reasons. Selfish reasons. The corpse should not be disturbed. I like, I think it's a bit of a leap to say that it's selfish. <laughs> it's really fucking good. <laughs> And smoke leaves his uh, nose and mouth. And, like, uh, just to really send it home, his uh, abdomen, it looks like a screaming face. Instead of, like, two nipples, he has, like, uh, two, like, uh, empty hollows that have uh, a burning red coal like eyes. And at the center, of uh, where his stomach should be, you see like uh, uh, what the fuck are those called? Just like a typical hole you'd see in a tree. Uh, I can't think if there's a proper name for it, but yes, like uh, there's just like an empty cavity of where his stomach should be. And do you see as this conversation's going along, he's getting more and more angry. And I think. A little bit of fire licks out of his mouth as he says. I shall say this once. Leave. Leave now and keep your lives. Stay and you forfeit them. Is there a third option? Leave. Maybe discuss this further? I am losing my patience. I mean... Hold on, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this because I'm just trying to see what makes sense for the situation I have. Mm -hmm. Nah, I gotta go with I don't think we can refuse 
um, not talking further. In fact, I don't think we can just leave. You're just as stubborn as a necromancer. And he snarls at you. Your ilk does not know when to give up. Kind of looks to Eddie when they said necromancer. And then looks back going like, can you explain further, at least with what this necromancer did and said to you? It's a rat. He scurries in the shadows, along with his pet bird. And again, like his clawed hand just keeps reflexively opening and closing as this conversation is going on. And he says, I spoke to him once, and he wanted to seek entry into the grave of ill omens. I refused him, and he was smart. He walked away, and he lurks in the shadows when traversing this, and he's looking for the right word for this entire facility, this tomb. Well, I don't think he's an issue anymore because he, like, peaced out a little while ago. Oh. Raises an eyebrow. Yes. He's gone. How do you know that? We came across him. I mean, we were exploring the place. Oh, uh, Rule, yeah. Ah. Uh, I think he was, like, speaking oh. metaphorically. Oh, right. Okay. Mine's a different issue. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> And do you see as uh, you guys are talking that the Venus flytraps are expanding outside of their little dirt trench, getting bigger and bigger as this conversation is going along? They're hungry, you know. I mean... They're always hungry for the type of plant they are. There's moments of silence. I guess, like, for what it's worth, like, you're really concerned for, like, the balance of nature of this place, right? I am Iorgu, servant of Melora. Her wish is my command, and she wishes none to enter the grave. Yeah, just to really stress on this point. This room seems like it's it. He He's guarding it. Whatever is in this room, whatever happens in this room, seems like the focal point of reaching the Grave of Ill Omens. Eddie, so I, I'll go on. Need to speak with Melora, right? 
Only those with her blessing may enter. And there's an air of finality behind it. Sounds easy enough. Hmm. Yeah, because I cannot stress enough how intimidating, huge, and strong this guy looks. And not to say it would be a TPK, but he is a strong opponent. A fit guardian of sorts. Flexes his muscles, starts yeah. to bulge more muscles. Yeah, bulge more moss. Starts flexing it up, grows another set of arms, <laughs> just so it can flex more. Then... Looks to Eddie. Very much goes, should we go to get the blessing, or... I, this dude's just doing his job. Indeed, hence why. Well, unless you're wanting to go toe to toe with them, I think it'd be wiser if we went and found this contact. Although, it's hard to say if we could find them. Well, I. I'm pretty sure we already have a rough idea where they are. Yeah, the uh, the image of a humongous blue fucking tree pops into everyone's head. Then, let's explore further. And then resolve that another time. And I think uh, he does slam his uh, fist down once. And like uh, the armrest to the throne comes off with a bit of a shattering and shrapnel. Just so we are clear. The next time you step within this domain, it is with her blessing or else you are enemies. And he is just referring to the greenhouse. Alright, sure. I get that. Try Pretty not sure. to overwork yourself. Maybe unionize, I don't know. <laughs> well, here's where the impasse comes into effect. There's two doors. One to the west and one to the south. Though, like he said, the next time you step foot into this greenhouse, a fight will break out. Unless you have a blessing from his queen. But it's up to you guys. There's a double door to the south, a single door to the west. Well then, pick a door. Four. My vote I, would be... Oh, go on. I guess we could, like... Try Wes? Kind of shrugs. Heads to the west door. Hmm. All right. Is the door also shaped like a D? Yep. It has the D door handle. You need to specify. Not, it's not the actual door itself. Ah. Yeah. Many people have worshipped this letter. <laughs> no worries. Opens the door. Okay. You open up the door, and you see a uh, small uh, chamber that acts as a junction with a path to the north, south, and west. Um, inside of this chamber, you see uh, two uh, torches 
on sconces that flicker with a uh, purple flame. And you see Iorgu, the guardian, sit back down and begin to pet one of his fly traps. Just to show you how big it got. Snapping at you guys as you guys are walking away. Ha! Ha! Snap, snap. Make haste. Make haste. I can't cast that one. <laughs> oh, can you can you move me, please? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, wrong one. There we go. And the door closes. Oh, that was something. Yeah, like as you guys uh, walk inside, you see the door close. So everybody agree not to make the giant muscled person angry? Yes, for sure. Um, I will give you guys one... Yeah. I I will give you guys one thing since you guys took a diplomatic approach uh, on him. You did see that uh, when when he uh, destroyed the armrest, he hurt himself. And I I would say like a course of like one damage. Uh, Cut cut and uh, bruised himself. But as he was talking to you guys, the vines regrew and covered his wound. It seems like he has a regenerative property to him. Though, you can't entirely be sure if it would be the typical uh, uh, solutions for uh, that trait would be, uh, you know, fire and acid. You, you're not entirely sure if that would be the answer to his uh, regen- uh, regeneration. Well, we solved that situation. Now we might as well just continue on. Eddie, I think we should head south. Yeah, I guess, like, we could just see what's in that direction. Um, I, I see something, like, flowy, but not a lot. Let me take a closer look. Hmm. Yeah. Looks down the hall just to see, <laughs> just like what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you uh, go down, you see a curtain and parted, uh, like, uh, the parted curtain... Within it, you see uh, uh, an orb of, uh, of uh, red crystal, and it is lit aflame. There's a pal- uh, palpable fire to it, and beside it is uh, two cages, and you see uh, within the cages, like, uh, uh, emaciated, uh, uh, starved uh, uh, dogs and uh, other, like, uh, mundane creatures, such as... Uh, yeah, I would go so far as to say uh, rabbit, and weirdly enough, an armadillo. But so specific, starved. an armadillo. Yes, an armadillo. I'll step here so people can walk in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oops. Well, this is actually a pleasant surprise compared to everything else we saw. And I need to describe the door to your west. It is a heavy-duty uh, door. It is made of a metal that you haven't seen anywhere else in this uh, facility. You see uh, no, no cracks, no openings. And for a door handle, it seems like it, there's an indent within the uh, door itself. But it is heavy, it is large, and it is strong. There is no lock to it. Interesting. Um, I'll investigate the burning stone. 
Um, give me an arcane check. Hmm. A 15. A 15 might be good for a uh, deduction here. Um, the uh, crystal that's on fire within the chamber. You feel as though that uh, the property of the fire itself is not from the uh, crystal. You feel as if this is an anchor to another world filled with fire. And with that, you see like uh, pipes that go into the floor and elsewhere. So I give you with 15. Non-threatening at all. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's normal to have portals in your house. I mean, look at Rick Sanchez. Fucking hate that guy, says <laughs> Seer. <laughs> anyway. Um, Aluya, do you want to take a look at the animals? Well, what? Hey, look at the animals and you see like a, a mutt, like a cross breed between a lot of uh, dogs. Um, if you guys ever seen Futurama, imagine like Fry's dog and like with thick eyebrows, very thin uh, patches of hair. And he's going <coughs> and going out to like lick your hand, but can't make his uh, shoulders go past the bars. I wonder why they're in the cage. They're adorable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, little buddies. Um, make me. It's your choice of re uh, whether you want to do Arcana or invest uh, investigation. <laughs> I'm good at both of those. Um, either one. I will. I'm trying to pull up my stuff here. Go. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let's go with investigation. All right. All right. With uh, investigation, uh, you see that the dog's a little too close to the fire. Aren't you hot, little one? Don't look like it's affecting him. Boy, it would be great if someone spoke to them. <laughs> you know, I got to say, Mavet, you really could have stepped it up back there. Um, you were kind of looking <laughs> dead in the eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he really could have stepped it up. Seer, how come the dog does not look like hot or panting? It's right next to the fire. My guess is the flame has a special property that makes it so that people don't tend to, well, die from heat exposure so quickly. Mm -hmm. But lastly, the simplest solution is the best, which means someone's been taking care of them. Aluya, the fire feels real and it is hot. The sweat in yep. between my chichi says that this fire <laughs> is quite hot. Part of an elaborate illusion, I would say. Quite an illusion. <laughs> uh, quite the elaborate illusion here. I don't know. Well, I... Maybe it's because these these little dog dudes are like different. Like special? You could think of it like that. Ultimately, when people want to test things, they can 
see if it has certain effects, putting your arm into one, or just simply, well, putting something in it. But while you investigate that, I might as well check here. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just gonna double check something real quick. Uh, Penny would at least like uh, like look over to the dogs, mm. and he will try saying in primordial, "Hey, little dudes." Hey, what's up? Oh my goodness! Yeah, God, you hear the dog speaking. <laughs> you hear the dog speaking primordial. Oh. The dog goes, oh, just chilling? Well, we're just, you know, sweating it out over here. Another day's work. Mm -hmm. Um, just a little excited, excuse me. It's like, oh, you're so cute. Uh, why are you in the cage? Um, yeah, uh, he really didn't tell us too much about that. Uh, he's just been lighting us on fire. Who is he? Uh, the, he looks like you, and like nods his head towards uh, Luya, indicating that's a human. It is a oh, human. Luya, how could you? But hold on now. I would never do such a thing. Uh, little one. Yeah, what's up? What? Well, forgive me, my manners. I am Luya. Who are you? Up dog. I I'm sorry. Up dog? Mm hmm. Up dog. Is that like your birth name, or did someone. or you choose that for yourself? I. It sounds exotic. It's a uh, profound. It's a profound technique in my culture. I'm sorry, you just wouldn't understand. All right. Um. To the person keeping you captive. <laughs> they are human. Yes. What else can you tell us about them? God damn it! All right, I just want to retcon that because I was trying to lean you into a bit. Um. <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, he, he says his name's Revan. And uh, uh, you said uh, the human... Uh, what was the uh, follow-up question? Uh, what What else can Updog tell me about them? No, his name's <laughs> Revan. His name's oh, Revan. Okay, the human is no, not named Revan. The dog is... Culture? <laughs> it is <laughs> like you you nearly stepped into my trap but like you, you didn't fall for it don't worry about it Louie. forget about up dog um <laughs> okay so the human um yeah he he's like a tall lengthy guy yeah uh, wore orange uh, robes had a weird hat old think You think? I don't know how old do you guys get. Hell, okay. are you baby? A uh, goo goo gaga. Anyway, uh. That's very offensive in my culture. <laughs> you speak. Again, Aaliyah. Yeah. How could you? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm really stepping in it here. Okay. That's um... a very offensive idiom in my culture. <laughs> My goodness. Aluya, why do you continue? <laughs> Maybe try not to be such a snowflake. I... Oh. He's actually shocked that you called him a snowflake. That is the worst slur you can call my kind. Oh, How God, Aluya. dare I'm, you? I'm, I'm trying to help you here escape, Aaliyah, you know? You... Cut me some slack oh, here. Oh, God. There's no snowflakes that can live in the fire. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want out or what? I was very happy to see you at first. Now I'm reconsidering my options. I think isolation <laughs> might be better than freedom for you, from you. Well, that would be your choice, and I would respect that. <sighs> Holy shit. Um, yeah, uh, he just goes, I'd appreciate if you sent us free. Well, also, this human, mm. they seem quite dangerous. Yeah. Keep here locked up. Yeah. Kept setting me on fire, even though it didn't hurt. Mm. You and he just kind of like leans in toward Aluya. Right, you know it's probably Owen, dude, right? <laughs> I. Well. It, hmm. it well, lines up well, with exactly what he told you on your first encounter, where he said he was doing an experiment on animals. Boy, my memory is so bad. I make so many awesome choices. Well, he Just... is removed from his body. Maybe mm. he don't does not need them anymore. Mm. I'd sure like to have his life. bones. Mm. Oh, his bones? Um, mm. I love... don't even know. I would love to bury his leg in the yard. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, guys, can we let these little ones go, please? Look at their faces. You see the armadillo, like its eyes gets really wide, then the bunny rabbit even wider, like Puss in Boots. Here, how can you deny their little faces? How can you deny the little animals that can speak a language? <laughs> These clever, clever little animals. You know, Eddie, just for the briefest of moments, is just going to uh, to, to open up his WhatsApp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, oh, dude, we found your hot dogs. Hmm. Hot dogs? I'm afraid, Eddie, I don't understand. Uh, like the ones you put next to the the fire thing. The fire, the fire. I. They said that you kept lighting them on fire. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, Eddie, and I. I know this sounds very specific, but you're going to have to be a bit more specific than that. <laughs> you're gonna find out very soon but yes uh, you're going to have to be more specific alright like you were lighting them on fire but it doesn't hurt them oh the animals yes what about them Uh, we just like walked across them like next to like a big fireball thing hmm yes don't touch the fire <laughs> but yeah probably could have uh, figured that one uh, but... <laughs> Well, I don't know. You have a fire genasi among you. I don't know what you would do. Well, really, only Berluya touches them. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but like... Why did you keep them near the fireball? Oh, well, you see. After feeding them a diet of very specific uh, herbs from the greenhouse they developed an immunity towards fire so i'm planning to use their skin for the skeleton oh 
And I think the dog is like, Hey, Otter, what are you doing? <laughs> As they're talking about skinning the fucking animals. Uh, sorry, yes. Brad, I'm just speaking with the universe. Hmm, <laughs> yes. It took quite a long while to figure out what species reacts to what regions, but I think I figured it out. So, like, it would be really difficult if, like, they escaped. If they escaped, it would take, hmm, years for me to resume my work grafting skin for the skeleton. Whereas one might say, many, many springs where the flowers blossom. It's a, quite a nice poem. As he's rambling on. Like then, Eddie, individually by message, <laughs> first yep. to Aluya and then to <laughs> Seer. <laughs> so, bad news like, Owen dude needs their skin for the skeleton. Uh, you're gonna hear back. Um, for what? <laughs> I don't question it. <laughs> we already are talking with a giant brain. I mean, but he's getting what he wants, no? He's going to get the skeleton body. Why does he need these poor little defenseless creatures? To fillet them? No, thank you. I mean, the thing that might be more disturbing is the fact that these are the animals he'll use. Which makes me wonder, how many more does he have hiding? Right, so, um, we should set them all free and give them lots of snuggles. <laughs> and I think, uh, at your hesitation, Eddie, because it does take a while to hear their individual responses, I think Owen, again, he can't hear their conversations, just to clarify. Owen just goes, Yes, I plan to uh, give them a sedative to make it as painless as possible. The only disturbing part about the process is regeneration. As he is going into uh, the specifics of how he intends to create flesh over the bones to help him... Uh, essentially make a meat puppet that can function and be durable in weather. Uh, probably won't like uh, go into the, the specifics of that, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, but Eddie will just kind of like reiterate. So like, apparently he needs that skin because it's super durable. Mm -hmm. And it would take many, many years for him to find an alternative. Does he really need the skin? All he right. said was that he needed the body, right? That's but many like, thing enough. But <laughs> like, have you ever thought about where all the stuff on your inside would go if you didn't have skin? Well, it feels like if he's going to be in the skeleton body, he's just going to be like them bones, them bones, them ham bones. And that's <laughs> it. Yeah, but I mean, brain. <laughs> it's going to just wiggle around in there. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, though, it's very much that, you know, I don't know too much of the deal, but I do know for the fact that it might mess with the idea of them having the body. Unless they already have a large storage of it. I 
I'm going to be frank with you both. I've tuned out my vet. Clearly, he just doesn't want to be present. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Give Real. yourself inspiration. That like I, I love that commentary. That's good. <laughs> Holy shit. I would not feel okay leaving them here. <sighs> I thought you were going to let us out. I'm trying, buddy. Believe me. You, you're just staring at each other. No, we're having a discussion. It might why not can't, look it, but... Why can't you talk in front of us? Surely we, can what, we should be able to hear you. Well, we're having mind conversations, so... Why? <laughs> it's not important at the moment. Just know it that I am really on your side. It sounds really important, though. It's okay, shh, my little ones. <laughs> so, now that we know they're not going to die from the heat. Uh, um, but they will... They will go find a nice farm at another time. Well, I hope look, you understand that I'm teasing. They're adorable. Why would I let them die? I'm sorry. I'm just having an inner crisis. I can't have Buffalo Bill have their hands on them. Just please. We should let them go. Look, it, well, it's not a good man. I'll tell you that. I learned that in my studies. How about this, then, Aluia? How about this, Aaliyah? Why don't you open the door here? I think it's safe. And I'll unlock the cages. Although, be aware, if I unlock the cages, they'll be roaming free and possibly be eaten by the giant Goliath, as well as points down the hallway, a bony boy. Well, I will... Look, we can listen, little ones. If I... We show you, like, draw you a map out... Would you follow it? What's a map? To avoid... Oh, caramba. Right. Okay. Off to, off to the corner here. <laughs> off to the corner here. <laughs> Just like, look, they're kind of... I'm gonna, like, borrow an expression from some less chill dudes, but... They're kind of damned if we do, damned if we don't. I... I... They're like... Like if we keep them here for what they're supposed to, well, then they're gone. But if we let them out, well, they're probably gone, but in a much more horrific way. <laughs> they have, like, no world experience. She looks at Betty. She looks at them. She looks at Seer. She looks at them. You're gonna let us go, right? You promised. Yes, let you know, You see it said she's gonna do it, okay? Um, I have to go over here. There's dust in my eye. I have to go get it out. <laughs> Does she actually walk away? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can Jesus. open the door if you want. Yep, you open the door and you see a brimstone and a, uh, a fire. All right. Um, so as you walk in, you see a uh, uh, brimstone, you see a uh, fire at the uh, uh, center of the room and the silhouette outlines of uh, human bodies around the fire itself, along with uh, a type of stone very, very close to uh, the stone sediment that you uh, seen in the uh, northeast 
of uh, this dungeon where the goblins were digging, 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 and they ran into a glowy bedrock. It's like a, a similar function. You look around, look around, look around, and Eddie, like after the explanation with uh, of uh, the the puppet with uh, the trash body, I think Owen finally gets around and goes, "Oh, I'm sorry, I lost myself there. There was something important I was going to ask you, Eddie. What happened?" To see her in my bed. Just, uh, stops. It's like, uh, like, what do you mean? I. Little dude's right here, and well, I just, no. Like... I lost my connection with them a while ago. I don't even feel them in this building. And we see the door shut and lock. Oops. Even great minds make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, we're going to roll for initiative to see how long Aluya can survive for, and we're gonna take a break. <laughs> bum bum bum. Dun dun dun.
So, what we're going to do here, set this up. All right, I want everyone to click their uh, uh, toggle combat state, and we're going to treat this as an uh, initiative because uh, it will be important. Do I know if I clicked it if it's got a little golden coppery border? It, it, if you just look at uh, the combat encounters tab on the top right, you can see it. I'll just uh, roll your initiative. Doesn't matter, there's not a third party here. Um, Aluya, you started this off, so we're gonna start off with uh, you, Aluya, before anything else. Aluya, you walk into this room, you see everything I told you beforehand. It's a circular room with a, uh, honestly, a pit-like fire at the center, and it is erupting with flame now, and the room is getting hot, and you feel with every round, it's going to get hotter and hotter. Just to describe your environment to your north, I know that you have vision, but there's no way for me to make a uh, one-way mirror. Um, you do not have vision to your north. Uh, with this room, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw because you are enduring this heat. Okay. Yep. And it's going to be DC 18. Alright. So we got with the first one. It's going to be 46 damage. Uh, could I roll again with my inspiration? Absolutely. Sixteen again. Wow. Sixteen to okay. sixteen. All right, so you're gonna take forty-six fire damage to start off with here. Okay. All right, that's gonna be nineteen fire damage as this room is wreathed with flames, and it is ungodly hot now. Like your skin is burnt. Uh, I want to assume that, like, uh, uh, Eddie, when uh. Big brain tells you that, Owen. Like, there's a moment, you feel your heartbeat for a second, you look at Seer saying, oops, you look towards the door, it shuts, and you just hear Aluya screaming behind the door. Seer, you set this all up. You are in charge of initiative. What do you do? Well, the good question I'm wondering is, like, is there anything else I can make worse? Because the problem is, I'm not dumb. Eddie can kick my ass. He very well could kick my ass, right? Mm. Yeah. But my goal isn't to make Eddie fall. My group, my goal is now to make it so that he can't get Aluya. Yep, to stall him. Correct. So how are you going to do um, that? Why? I have a few ideas, but one of the main ideas I was thinking of that could work is that I just, you know, simply not allow him to be near the door. Mm -hmm. One way to do that is to... How to describe it? I'm trying to see my spell. Ah, I didn't prepare it. Huh. Sag. I have a question. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Do I get any actions or anything during my first encounter, or it just kind of is what it is? You you uh, essentially treat it like a lair action. 
It okay. has its own position in uh, initiative. You have not gotten a chance to act yet. Your reaction is walking in this room and being affronted by flames. Got it. Yep. Don't worry. You will get. You will get a chance before a prox again. I might as well go for broke. Yep. We're gonna put a flaming spear right after I move a little bit over here. It's around Eddie. And Eddie. Okay. There we go. But I will put a flaming sphere right at the door. Okay. Yeah, that minute. happens. Yeah. Was it uh, take up a five foot square? Yep. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see it just wreathe in flame right in front of the door. It is shut tight, and we have a block of fire uh, right in front of the door. What else do you do, Seer? Try to make sure I use all my actions and such. Yep. It's important. Basically, Seer will look upon Eddie and being like, might be harder for you to stop me a bit. As Seer will take a potion as, you know, the item interaction. Yeah. And take a nice swig. Okay. That potion will be very simply... One of the most broken potions I have, the potion of invulnerability. <laughs> okay. Alright. Remind the audience for a potion of invulnerability. Yep. Let's read Basically, the I'm resistant yep. to all damage for the next minute. Hmm. That's correct. Yeah, you uh, begin to uh, drink this uh, potion, and uh, what does this look like on your skin? As this potion starts to fill up into me, the potion itself seems to be that of liquefied iron, and you just see the veins, the marks, the things that um, Seer has turned from a yellow to a silvery glow as this iron slowly encapsulates all their veins. Hmm. And then suddenly their skin just starts to become hardened. Okay. Goddamn. Anything else you'd like to do this turn? I simply look to Addy and being like... TikTok. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. Move on to uh, Eddie. Eddie, a lot's going on. Uh, you, you were told by Owen that he can't sense Mavet or uh, a Seer at this moment. The door in front of you has locked. You heard Aaliyah scream, and you see a uh, sphere of flames right in front of the door. What do you do? Well, little dude, I don't know what's wrong with you, but... As like uh, the smoke just like uh, uh, starts billing around Eddie, I'm gonna start playing the odds. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's a cool line. <laughs> Fuck yes. What are you gonna do? So, so very simple is that like uh, Eddie knows how magic works. Mm -hmm. Even if she's like uh, more invulnerable than she normally is. Uh, hmm. She could still fail con checks. There you con go. Con saves. <laughs> That's kind of why I took the potion too, because I'm sitting there going like, if I take a lot of damage, I need to roll a higher check. So if I take less damage, my checks are better. So we're uh, gambling. Well, the the issue is he can force you to make multiple checks. Is his... oh, I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to get at. If it was a, it means the DC's lower. Yep. Regardless. Yep, and you have proficiency well, I mean, with there's, it. 
there is never a there was never a version of this uh, story where I would be making you take any make any save higher than ten. Uh, yeah, ten. Mm. Regardless. Uh, well, let's True, see what but that's also why I didn't want to be blown apart. Yeah. So let's see it. It's also that. Uh, sure, everything's set up. Uh, okay. Damn! First one's a hit with the 21. With an uh, Eddie Blast. <laughs> now I just feel like uh, one of those uh, uh, fucking... Uh, uh, sp I'm trying to think of like uh, what the hell they're called. Um, Not radio. Uh, the broadcaster men for uh, uh, practically any sport. <clears throat> and Eddie for the kick! <laughs> fucking 11 force damage. Uh, Which half. is now yeah. half. Five. Mm -hmm. Five. So then con save number one. Oh. Yep. Um, I'll let you do uh, the bookkeeping because I don't want to, yeah, fuck with your guys' shit here. Oh, don't worry. I'm just messing yep. with it, so I'm just pressing. Hmm. There we go. Yeah. Uh, it looks so... like you took that twice, though. Um, That's what I'm fixing. Okay. Okay. Con check. Mm-hmm. Yeah, constitution saving throw. Watch me roll a one. Ooh. Keeping it up. 23. Uh, not this time. Mm-hmm. Attack number two. Uh, 26 to hit. Owie. 26, Jesus Christ. Yeah, 13. So that'd be the uh, 6. Yeah, well, it was kind of a good idea to take that potion. Yep. That is a pass 19. with a 19. The sphere is Bonus up. We deem yeah, we grow it up. Bonus action. Going for another set of Eldritch Blasts. There you go. Uh, you, you know, I, I never, like, I, I feel like we dabbled on this a little bit, but what does these sorcery, like, uh, uh, points look like when you're spending them? Like, what, what's the flavor for this additional boost? It's a... Uh... I would like to imagine that uh, it's almost as though, like, I like to think it actually, like, comes from, like, other uh, creatures around Eddie. Like, there's sort of, like, some sort of, like, energy that is, like, uh, exuding from other creatures going into Eddie, and then he is mm -hmm. using that. Yeah, and we see the animals get weaker and weaker as you do this. It, like, uh, Son Goku <laughs> doing the spirit bomb. Ah, damn, you're rolling hot, man. 26. An 11 force, which is 5. Alright. Alright. And a 3. Which would be a 9, and I... Ah. Fuck, that is bitch. Early a fail. <laughs> yeah, Damn the it. flaming spear is gone. Unless I flickered. use my. Oh, I think you ran out. Genius. I have one left. I saved that last goddamn one. Holy shit! Holy shit! Now I am out. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> I found my carriage. Okay, hang I on, got hang on. like. That, that was a pivotal moment. Yeah, keep the rolling going. But uh, 
Uh, what does this blast look like? What made it different enough to disrupt your concentration? And uh, Seer, as you're losing your concentration, uh, what, does, what does your magic look like? What does your feature look like as you are defying fate itself? Let's we'll start off with Eddie. It's like, I almost like to imagine to a certain degree that Eddie's smoke is actually, like, different from regular smoke. So, like... Like as like it's being like you know like hurled at uh, at Seer, it's like mm. uh, um, like it actually is is like starting to like uh, like degrade her a little bit and maybe even like start making like her head woozy, much like mm. a lot of the smoke that <laughs> that Eddie makes on a regular basis. You know, like uh, like her head's getting a little foggy. <laughs> okay, and uh, Moo Seer. Like, head's getting foggy. Uh, all that happens. Oh. Like, uh, what do you do? Like, uh, what's your flavor as you defy this? You know how some people get caught off guard by something and they're just, like, taken aback? That moment mm -hmm. occurs with Seer, but all they do when they see Eddie hit them with that is they just take a deep breath, a really quick one, and release as the smoke comes out and she just kind of glares going like, it's not going to work. <laughs> okay and the final attack although the although 22. the big Hurry the up. truth is though i'm scared when i say a cool line i always tend to fail the next save so let's yeah. see what eddie damage was okay let's see it just a seven <laughs> yeah so with 22 to also, hit bold of you to assume it's my final attack yeah uh, <laughs> yeah he still oh, has one assumed. more trick so, uh, three damage. You just need to get a four and higher. Pass. Okay, 15. With the 21 for your saving throw, that that flaming sphere is staying up. Eddie, what's your final trick? The, then suddenly, like, the smoke starts billowing up even more as we do an Eddie surge. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, hang on. What's your posture with all this? Because you're doing an all-out attack here. Like, how, how does this, like, what what does your uh, uh, posture look like? How are you standing? What does this look like? I'm trying to get a view of this in my head here. Because you got fire erupting what? behind you. <laughs> so, well, very simply, uh, so Eddie is... I think because of this particular, the nature of this situation, he is actually standing up straight. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you got Eddie to stand up straight. <laughs> it's, uh, Looks and, like, like I fixed your posture there, Otter. <laughs> <laughs> With the hard R. <laughs> <laughs> Squint your eyes. This isn't Seer. <laughs> That's the moment. Wait, hold on, hold on. This is this is insincere. <laughs> oh, that's good. For real? <laughs> insincere. I, I, I have to leave. That hurts. I hurt way too much when they said it. Oh God. <laughs> that's a good evil doppelganger name. Oh, the first miss with the uh, four with the action surge. Uh, you know what? Even though this is usually a pretty big waste of this feature. Hmm. I'm going to add 2d4 to that. All right. Sounds good. Uh, what's your AC, Seer, for reference? It is 18. 18. All right. So you just need six. That's a pretty good fucking AC. Ah, because you finally got a shield. Get it. Yeah. I don't have, I have a shield, yeah, but I, he's going to get it. I bet you he's going to roll two threes. <laughs> well, I'm still, like, uh, really... Uh, like I said, playing the odds here. Yeah, I was going to say it's against the average. He he needs uh, he needs to get lucky with these rolls. A three and a four. <laughs> holy shit. Seven. I told you. You got it. I knew it. There you go. Let's see the hit. <laughs> I'm not usually wrong. 14. Oh. Jesus. Uh, seven damage. Oh, where did the auto roll go? It was originally letting me do the HP auto roll. Okay, I'll well, just do it by manual. Yeah, yeah. It's because it considered it a mess even with uh, 
the uh, roll. Even if you do damage, if it's a miss, it won't uh, do the auto roller. But yes, it is a hit with the fucking... Holy shit, and a 13 for the constitution saving throw. Alright. Right. God, I would have died if I didn't have the potion of vulnerability. He's like punching me down. <laughs> At 25, you're just rolling super good with these attack rolls. Holy shit. Oh, okay, so nine. Okay. Reduced to four. Yep. What what is the actual total damage without reduction here? What the fuck? Um, is this? so let's put it this way. So since the start of combat, he's been rolling really damn well. So I took eleven. Twenty four. Thirty five. Let me keep going. Mm. 42. 42. 54. 54. Getting close to your oh, max. Oh, no, correction. HP. Sorry, 56. Yep, 56. And that is 65 damage. 65 fucking damage. So. In total, 32 damage is what you took from all that. And a natural 20 constitution saving throw as the orb of fire only flickered once, but stands resolute. Uh, I know, uh, Eddie, I, I've been badgering you about flavor this, flavor that, just because this is just such a cool scene. But uh, is there anything else uh, you're planning to do on your turn here? Uh, like uh, I think Eddie like you know, like will stay exactly where he is, but he will say like as he is ending his turn. Um, so uh, I can't stop Eddie once he's like this. <laughs> you can stop him, Seer. Okay, now from the top. Mega, uh, start of your turn to end your turn. How does this like uh, look? Blast after blast after blast. <laughs> like I need to see this because this is just such a fucking cool scene. Well, it's like, like Eddie has actually like stood up and like uh, Eddie has taken like particular notice of this, and it's like uh, as the smoke starts billowing up, like uh, very similar to like. Uh, I would almost say like similar to like seraphim wings, like and just like mm. you know, like uh, like uh, like the the six blasts that would like uh, like appear just off to his side, and as they like start firing one after the other after the other, like at Seer, just like uh, trying to like uh, mess her up, make her like uh, lose concentration. The smoke is starting to billow up into the air, and it's like uh, and I imagine just again because of like how resolute the seer is currently being so um, it's, uh, actually I will go ahead and say like the last blast I actually am going to knock her five feet away <laughs> okay uh, there is a object in the way um, oh god he's trying to knock me into it um I, uh, usually I allow bludgeoning damage with a little bit of buildup. Uh, in this situation, I would have allowed fire damage, but that's uh, not... It doesn't uh, matter. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, there is no space for her to go on to, but she gets knocked back to her original position. Fire erupting around her. God damn, that's so cool. Both of you guys have, like, fire behind you. Like, you're in an inferno. All of you! <laughs> Even fucking Nita. <sighs> all right that's uh yeah we finished off your turn that was a cool little scene there um Aluya, it is your turn you are uh, in this chamber of hell um you don't have a visible line of sight out of here what do you do uh 
I I'm gonna try the door. See try if the I can door. Get out. All right. Yeah. Item interaction. It is locked. There is no keyhole. There is only indentation, and it is not budging for you. Okay, then I will use my sorcery's point to... And, uh, and just to quickly put it in here, just to really hammer in the point, there is no uh, cracks, there is no uh, like holes through the door. It is functionally a wall. Okay. Go on. I'm going to quicken spell um, Dimension Door. You don't have to. I thought it was an. You didn't I use your it, action. Oh, I thought the item <laughs> you grabbed you was my action. That's you're why. Good. No, you're you didn't good. use dimension door. Go for it. Oh, then I don't know. I knew you kind of had that spell, so it made it funny. Okay. So I'm just going to bounce out. I don't know where to go. Um, I can't. Where see. do you think if Valuya was panicking, they would think if they saw in this building, they would go to? Into the fire. Uh -huh. Please <laughs> do. Into the fire. Would you go back to the person that fed everybody food? Maybe the brain? Um. It's literally anywhere in a 500 foot radius from you, so you've uh, got options. Yeah, you do. Um. I think I think the only thing that comes out because I'm sorry, it was shiny and it made an impact. Uh, this crystal room over here. Mm. It was just kind of a hot flash of a situation that kind of crept up into her. So that's where she's going. Ooh. Let me do it. I can't move. Yeah. Well, that's because there's a wall. Well, he yeah. he kind of has to yeah. do it because. Uh... Yeah. Just give me a second. I'm just reading through something. Okay. Okay. All right. Range on there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I got nothing. It works out perfectly. All right. And you said you wanted to be in the room with uh, the uh, mirror? The mirror no, room? The, it's the enchanting crystal room. Enchanting. Oh, okay. okay. Go over there. Crystal room. Yeah. There. Okay. There you go. I'm Far away, going young child. To... Yeah. I'm just going to take a moment and just collect myself because <laughs> I got burn marks all over me. Hmm. And that will be my turn. Just kind of huffing and puffing, trying to get a good breath from all the smoke. <laughs> trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. This is the second time Dimension Door has saved your ass. Yeah. Alright. Again, uh, Eddie, Seer, both of you are unaware of what just transpired here. We go back uh -huh. to uh, Seer. It is your turn. Um, what about Eddie with a flaming spear right by him? Um, okay, so that's with, uh, when you're within five feet, or do you actually have to make uh, contact with it? Um, if he starts their turn there, I think they ended their turn right there. I forgot to mention that. I just didn't want to interrupt. Let me look at it. Oh, yeah. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet must make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, so I forgot to feet. tell you that, Eddie. Okay, okay. Within five feet. Oh, I was waiting for you to mention it. Yeah, yeah I apologize. I was uh, just, I just, no, I was letting Gray have fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I wanted to make sure. I usually save it on my turn. So. Okay. Uh, uh, what's a uh, saving throw? 
18. 18? Got you. Make the saving throw and let's get on with it. This failure. You will take. Roll it. <laughs> Both <damage>. ones. <laughs> yes. Ah, it's that... getting hot, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> but basically. For the pepper. But you're gonna see Sears stand up emboldened behind them by flames and they just stare at you and go like as I said I don't really need to fight you I just simply wait do you think you waste your time on me if so I'm ready I will do one thing okay. I will quaff one of my elixirs which will okay. give me Ten temporary hit points, and on top of that, if I'm looking at my features correctly... Oh yeah, this is the one that I saved, because I just wanted to save it for the HP thing. Yeah. But you'll start to see Seer slowly try to look more like Aluya and being like... <laughs> Don't waste your breath. I'll just take their looks. There you go. Anything else on your turn? Yes, I'm going to try to hurt Eddie. So okay. what I'm going to do is that I actually am going to drop the bottle I quaffed and catapult it to Eddie's face. Oh, hell yeah. Did you use an action to drink that? Um, It was a bonus action due to Grey allowing me. Hmm. It usually does take an action since it's an elixir, but I talked to Grey when I first made the character. Yeah, it's perfectly right, fine. Yep, yeah, it is perfectly right. fine. Take you your want... lumps. So I need another dexterity saving throw, Eddie. <laughs> DC 18. <laughs> Working on it. Oh, jeez. Oh. Uh, yeah, with the four, that's failure. I'm trying okay. to double check if my alchemist savant will no, add to that. Deal, it doesn't deal fire or acid damage. You're correct. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. You take 12 bludgeoning damage, mm. otter boy. <laughs> otter? Again with the hard art. So basically, they're very, they just very much stand there, and you could tell they're like, their whole goal is not to kick your ass. Their whole goal is being like, go ahead and focus me. Whatever's happening behind there is their demise. I'm here to ultimately make it so you can't get to them. And that is where I end my turn, as Seer gets themselves prepared. So, well, you're still taking uh, four Eldritch Blast attacks, so... <laughs> there you Owie. go. No, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm squishy. There you go. Well, simply put, for the same reason why you couldn't get to the succubus, I can't get to the. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. pulling out That's old words. That's why you're getting focus fired right now. <laughs> you dick. Fighting <laughs> words. All right, I'm ready. Oh, sorry, I just uh, have to bring this back up. Right. 
there. Mm. Alright, attack number one. Yeah, 25 to hit. Five. Yeah, it's going to hurt. Ten. Mm -hmm. Five damage. And a four for exact ten. Oh my god. Like, uh, I'm playing the odds in a different way because I could technically try to make you re-roll that, but you still have pretty good odds on rolling, yeah. like, a four or higher. Mm. That's why I'm scared he keeps pummeling me because I'm just slowly dying. I was gonna say, you're gonna die That's exactly you drop my AC. concentration. Yeah, 18 is the exact hit. Okay. Or just four damages, or eight to produce to four. Hmm. Oops, I should add four more eight. I'll just pretend. <laughs> oh, wait, I have temporary hit points, so that means I've been taking off damage that I shouldn't be. I'm goofed. Yeah, you're um, goofed. Well, I have one. You might, as, you might as well just see if, like, if I take it out anyway. Uh, hmm. Wait, I have one hit point left if you of uh, temp if you hit it, so there you go. Mm. That means then I'm still at my last HP was forty three, so I'm at forty two. There we go. There you go. Alright. Another six. Oh god, four again. <laughs> All right, Eddie, do your worst. Huh? This one will miss. Yep, 13. Didn't have a good, like, hit the uh, uh, miss ratio so far. Hmm. And, uh, and 12. 12. <laughs> Well, since this might be going on a bit longer, and yeah. so this time around, a little bit of fumbling here. Mm. Uh, pardon me. Yeah, that's fine. It's like uh, essentially, like uh, Eddie is going a bit over Eddie's head, and then Eddie is going under Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Eddie and Eddie are switching places. All right. So just for the record, uh, the Flaming Sphere actually can't reach me. Uh, and Seer is now officially between four objects, so Seer actually there can't go. go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. True, but I was going to say, doesn't Eddie have to make a save? That they end her turn there? Well, I was just making sure that this part was clear. So that Eddie could actually just go here. <laughs> there you go. Yep. All right, that before... Recent. Before I do that, we gotta have Eddie roll save. Hmm. Oh, he's not a flammable object. Oh, damn or it, I forgot. You're gonna take an attack of opportunity, though? <laughs> that oh, I hate AOE. that. AoE? Oh, I fucking hate that so much. Uh, but I can still hit him next turn, so that's okay. Yeah. Um, I can try to hit him with an attack of opportunity, why not? Oh, fuck it. I'll poke him. Give him a little poke. Take a dagger. <laughs> yeah, like, help. I'm not expecting results. <laughs> but go. yeah. Give it a little bit of a dagger poke. Yeah, that's right. it for Eddie's turn. You pretty much only have one place to go, and it's yep. not much better than the place you're currently at. 
Bap, bap, bap. True. However, what I will do is I'll slam with a bonus action the sphere into the current eddy. Okay. Doesn't do anything. Um, let me double check the rulings because while it doesn't do anything, the key thing I'm trying to see is that if it actually procs uh, something. Yeah, it's more important how it interacts with an object. Because, like, sure, Eddie is an object, but he does have an AC and he does have an HP. So, basically, I could ram it into a creature and I force a creature to make a save, taking the sphere's damage. But it's not, yeah, but it's not. And because it's it not, a, not creature, a creature, you can't do that. <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, like, it, you could say the same thing with wall. A wall has an a a AC and, a, a, you know, HP pool, but it, again, it's an object. Mm hmm. No, I'm just making sure. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Can't move it though. Um, how high is the ceiling? Um, just like everything else, uh, about uh, 15 feet high. Okay, I'll just fly around. <laughs> Eels. So you're gonna move out of uh, uh, Eddie's. I'm gonna move then. out of his. Correct. Okay. You gonna take that, Eddie? <laughs> Basically, I'll just be floating above, like, 15 feet after I take the okay. attack of opportunity. So yeah, it's like, so I'll take it, and then I'm just going to be above. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Um, waiting for that attack of opportunity. My, my, I might lose concentration. There, there, there is none. Oh, all right, you, Eddie. You, did, you didn't, at least as far as I can, wait, how high did you go? 15 I feet, 15, and, I, so I, I and I asked her if she moved uh, moved out of range. She did. I did, so that's what I was specifying. Shoot uh, me, Eddie! Yeah, I'll, I'll do... I'll go ahead and do it. So, mostly because the... Uh, mostly because, like, a lot of your uh, attacks are going to be of a different sort. Hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, I guess I could just scroll back up. Make life easier on myself. Yeah, miss. Right, 16 misses. Yep. And then the other one. Damn, 14. Cool. All right, then a seer flies up, avoiding the Eddie blast. They take another vial, and mm. take another swig from as a bonus act. Oh no, I already used my bonus action. Yep. Um, as my action to quaff a potion yep. of speed. That's perfectly fine. So basically, my AC goes up by two. I have advantage on all dexterity saving throws, and I may take an additional action. That Damn. is a weapon attack. Okay. So, okay, how are you doing this? Oh, you, you actually used the haste in spell. The... Okay. Well, not the spell, the potion. It's a potion of speed. Hmm. I... It is this exact same way as has haste uh, is. It's That's just what it is. It's haste. It's just the potion, instead of lasting for a minute, it lasts for a few hours. Which okay, it's, not one of your art it's not one of your artificer potions. It's a potion to have. Correct. By the way, fun fact, in second edition, if you drank one of these potions, you lose you lost a year of your life. <laughs> yeah. Because you metabolize so much of your life. Right. Um, but anyhow, with my extra action as I fly, I go into Eddie's above Eddie, so I'm not gonna move my token. Yep, that's fine. We'll just take a mental and note that you're above uh, Otter Eddie, correct? Not Shadow Knight Eddie? At Otter? Correct. Okay. Correct. You're above him. And what I am going to do, mm. I have nothing else to do. Like, I, I already used my action economy, so I'm just going to stab him. <laughs> so hang on. Are, you're going to float down until you're within his reach and stab him? Correct. Okay. Got you. I want so, his yeah. I want his pelt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen. 
Okay. Uh, just double checking. But it's, uh, it's been a hot second. The... The... Yes, that will hit Eddie. Hmm. Watch this impressive damage of... Three, <laughs> three points. Three fucking damage. But the idea yes. is like, hey... Steer's becoming more and more of a threat. So I don't need to do a lot more things. <laughs> By poking you. <laughs> oh, okay, and that's the end of your turn, Seer? Yeah, I'm basically going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eddie. Okay. Eddie, what are you going to do? Drinking a lot of expendable potions to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, you go. Our I am an alchemist. I drink my potions. That's what I, I do. I'm the. Yeah, I'm secretly the drug addict. Very that expensive, you... and you'll probably never come across them again. <laughs> I know. Be <laughs> aware. I cannot choose the situation because I don't know the situation. So I just have to play it in the sense that I. My goal is to kill you. Oh so I will not waste any expenses to murder you. You're, you're absolutely but correct, Daddy. <laughs> that is the truth of being a good role player. I don't care about resources. What I care is if I complete my goal, and my goal is the radio. <sighs> but yeah, that's the end of my turn. Okay, Eddie, what the fuck are you gonna do? Honestly, this is going to be a setup situation. Okay. I love how it's like we're still fighting, going like, Aluya's gonna die, and Aluya's yeah, like, she's still... ah. Yeah, just in a very nice <laughs> little fucking room. finds Eddie, and it's like, what the fuck happened? And it's like, <laughs> you didn't know? Yeah, I got Sears blood all over me. <laughs> yeah, this, in this situation, this makes the most sense. Uh, but, uh, yep, Eddie is going to like, uh, Yeah, that seems good. Uh, centered on himself. But, uh, he is like uh, going to use his action to cast Fog Cloud. Yep. All right, to be fair, while you put up Fog Cloud, I'm just going to move my screen to the side. Just to make it fair that I can't see Eddie. You yeah. know? <laughs> essentially covers like uh, the chamber you're in uh, the junction chamber and a little bit north of that chamber and then it's like uh remind me where seer actually is again they are right above your head yep okay feet. Yeah, I think this would be 
Uh, and like the the total height of the ceiling is in fact like fifteen feet. Yeah. 15, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, I kind of already know how this is going to go, but mm. so I think I'll just... Yeah, I think Eddie will move here. All right. Yep. Doing fine, still within range. Well, she wouldn't be able to make an opportunity attack anyway. Um, Correct. But you can actually just go ahead and like uh, move her here now since I've moved out. Mm. My main reason for doing that. <laughs> okay. All right, let me do that. There you go. Just assume there's smoke so, everywhere. And then, yeah. and then Smokey Eddie is going to like uh, now be here. <laughs> yeah, to the south of Seer. And uh, since I'm not really doing anything else with my bonus action, uh, I might as well take a smoke break. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. I believe about so seven Eddie HP will get back. Eleven. Eleven. Gotcha. So I was about to accidentally target myself. <laughs> well, I think I did, but. All right. Yeah, uh, whatever. But yeah, that'll that'll end uh, Eddie's turn. All right, serious. Back to you. What? All right, I'm gonna go to faster do? on this case because very much. Now it's just this Eddie and me. Yep. I'm blinded. I can't see. Back up, which really is gonna suck. I take a few attack of opportunities since Eddie has blind sight. <laughs> You're in the jungle now. So, like, uh, like where specifically are you going? Uh -oh. I'm going straight up, trying to see where the attacks come from. That's my goal, because if I see an Eldritch Blast fly towards me, I know where to what to do next. Directly up towards the ceiling, gotcha. Correct. I'd be leaving the range of both Eddie and Eddie. For uh, the reach. I'll be correct, and they technically can hit me at advantage, because I can't see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was planning on, that's the whole reason for the advantage, to yeah. essentially try to undo the fact that you just increased your AC by two. There you go. Anyways, like it's uh, this blast is going to come from uh, Smoke Yeti. Okay. Cool. Oh, I lost my, I lost my HUD. I don't know why it disappeared. Holy shit, natural 20. Ow. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. That's well, maybe not one. hurt, hurt. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It might not hurt her. It might just kill her. That's pretty healthy. It's pretty hard to kill me once I'm going. Hmm. Oh, okay. I was supposed to actually touch the critical... I, I never know when this is supposed to... Um, Do just, yeah, press the critical uh, when you make a critical hit. Well, like, it's like, because, like, in Mad's game, like, yeah. he has it so that it rolls it automatically, so yeah, am going to be yeah, confused yeah. all the time about... Yeah, it's perfectly it fine. I get confused about it, even in my own games. Okay. So, 
nine damage. <laughs> yep. In total. Uh, yep. Perfect. Half already. Yep. I'll roll a con check, but you keep going. Mm hmm. Keep her going. Um, okay, yeah. 23 for constitution saving throw. From Seer to keep up that flaming sphere. Because we all know Luya's dying at this very moment. Oh, shit. Um, I believe it's 20 now, right? just barely misses. <laughs> Yeah, with an 18. Gucci. Yeah, yeah. Yep, you got a blast from behind you. <laughs> uh, okay. From behind me, okay. So wait, the flaming yeah. sphere is still up? Yeah. It is still um, up. And she's flying? I believe uh, the fly still... is not concentration because she got it from consumable. Oh, I got it from boots. Oh, the boots, oh. sorry, yes. Oh, Fancy well, no, boots. you don't have the boots. I have the boots. Oh, no, right. You're right. Sorry, my brain. Because I do have a potion of flight, too. Yeah. You, I think it one. was for the yeah. potion. My brain's kind of everywhere. Yeah. Well, I assume even if you got from the potion of flight, it, it should not. Uh, I don't believe it's uh, concentration based. Correct. It, it's just a duration of one minute, I think. Or, yeah. Or it was either one or ten. <laughs> I am burning so many resources. I'm going to be so please sad, continue. Yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I I'll Keep I'll continue going. because I'm gonna burn another resource. Yep. Fuck with That's Eddie. I don't need to see someone to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck I you. I don't will... need my sight. <laughs> I'm gonna use a spell scroll to cast confusion. Huh. Confusion doesn't require sight. No. Like the the spell basically itself. each creature in ten foot of a sphere at, on a point you oh. choose within range. I don't need to see. I just point. I just choose a point. Okay, if that's what you really want to do. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. It's like I'm just sitting here going, like I'm just stalling. It's very much see. We'll just say it's like I could tell you're getting pretty heated. I imagine right, that's so how then, they are too. So then, as uh, flaming spheres, concentration is lost. Uh... <laughs> it, yeah, it is another concentration. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That's why I was like, are you sure? Yeah, I uh, caught on to that a little later than uh, Eddie, because he knows okay. he spells by heart. If it, but if I was it, just looking it at it, and you. concentration popped up. I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> that's okay. We'll have fun with it. Although, we'll, although like, it, it still could be a bit fucky. Because, uh, like, you know, I could fail the save. DC 15 wisdom. There you go. Let me just roll I that. How, I don't even know how long you've been on uh, uh, to that scroll because I didn't. I wasn't even worried that you had it. <laughs> um, I'm going to use one of my baser inspirations to re-roll that. Yeah, that's fine. Fail. 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 Damn 19. it. Yeah, so it's 8 I just and 19. Imagine, yep. I just want to imagine, Eddie, you're just sitting there and all of a sudden you just feel this wave of concussive force that's trying to muffle your head. And you just kind of like cover your eyes and you're just kind of like avoided it. Okay, and then before I end my turn, as a bonus action... Well, actually, I don't need to end my turn right away because as my action, as my bonus action, I quaff a potion, another okay. healing potion. I'm just trying to make it do it. Come on! Alright, see, so we'll get that. 
more worried and then about as than my Olympic action athlete. that I get Jesus. And then as an action that I have an extra thing to do, I also will drink another potion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And just simply look to say to Eddie, it's like, I can keep going. <laughs> just, <laughs> it just reminds me of the nerd that got the shit kicked out of them going, come on, so all you got? A <laughs> kid bleeding, two black eyes. And that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Eddie, it's your turn. What are you going to do, bud? Oh, actually, Figure. that circle is smaller than it should be. It definitely should be. The circle is as big as a fireball. It's a 20-foot radius, not a 20-foot diameter. Actually, it's a 10-foot radius. So that's actually perfect. I was just saying it's like with this cube, so it still works. Don't yeah, worry about no, it. No, it's... No, it's... No, it's fire... Uh... Cloud? Cloud that's what I looked up confusion. It said 10-foot radius. Oh, okay, that circle was for confusion. Yeah. Correct. We're still in the fog. Oh, okay, cloud. okay. Like I thought that was like the, the because like the, the color of the yeah. of the fog cloud circle it, like is kind of blending in with the, the yellow, so like it's like No, oh, they're they're yeah, you, that. you don't have a template down for the fog cloud, but it's perfectly fine. We understand that it fills up both the rooms and I don't foresee the battle leaving both these rooms. But Let's when be it gets real to though. That, should we, should we have Aluya kind of like eventually start wandering in? I, I, yeah, I was gonna start you asking. Know, the thing is, is, that like the crystal room is like far away, and yeah, more specifically, isn't it on the other side of beyond an enemy? <laughs> so I mean, if she were to come down, we could start up two combats, but we'll deal with that when we deal with that. Uh, Aluya, are uh, you still taking a breather, or would you be uh, charging down? No, I was gonna... <laughs> I just needed a moment to oppose myself, but I would have uh, started to make my way back down. Okay. Would well, you use, like, a spell to get there, like Dimension Door? Yeah, I was gonna use it again. Uh, if if you want, we can say at this moment, I mean, only, like, uh, you know, a handful of seconds went by. I do feel a little bit bad for keeping me out of the encounter this long. Uh, it, it's fine. It seems like they had some beef to take care yeah. of. Yeah, and I feel like this <laughs> is a good moment to add another variable here. Um. Yeah. To think just... about where I would portal from because I can't go yeah. to the garden room. Yeah, just ping where you want to be and I'll put you there. Uh, I mean, the last place I can think of from where I was is thinking about these critters, so... No. Alright. Bap. Uh, flavor this up for me. In between Seer's turn and uh, Eddie's turn as you just appear. Uh, having had the stuffing burnt out of me. Mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out what just happen and the people who guided me here to that point. And I want to um, also hear the flavor of the spell as well. Like, what does Dimension Door look like for Luya? Yeah, sure. So, she kind of just focuses in and all around her these sparkling little uh, salmon-colored dots come together, forming a door and... They just open up for her into a shadowy darkness, <laughs> and it just takes her away. Okay. Um, here's where, what I'm going to provide for you, um, because, ah. again, like uh, I, I skipped over you a couple times to see where this combat would go. I'm going to allow you to act in between uh, Seer and Eddie, then after Eddie, so essentially giving you two turns on this round. I'm completely blinded, right? 
you would be a, you are currently in a fog cloud okay. and cannot see <laughs> kind of fucked yourself right there i mean i don't know what's happening <laughs> You're just I hearing like because of nope. glass, you're hearing <laughs> yeah. like Elder's Flash shoot into the air. You're like, what the fuck? Okay. There you go. Uh she's going to little creatures. What the fuck just happened? There was a lot of fire. I don't know what happened. But it seems like the 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 furry guys uh, attacking the fire girl. Really kicking her ass. <laughs> That's a rabbit responding. <laughs> Who Can't started see shit. The... I, I, I'm not That's sure. Like here. the the fire girl locked you in the room. Then the uh, the otter feller, he, he just started beating the shit out of her. <laughs> I'm sorry. She did what now? Yeah, you got locked in the room. What well, fuck? <laughs> well, fuck. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are you gonna to do? See what I can, I'm trying to find something that does not require a visual component. Um. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Fuck. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. You know Shit. what? Just because nobody really knows that I'm there, I'm gonna cast Greater Invisible. Nope, I cannot do that. Um, Only bonus actions. Yes. I can expend uh, my sorcery points to get my spell slot back, right? Uh, as a... Uh, cl no, at, yeah, like, is that an optional rule from uh, Sorcerer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not even optional. That's just Inherent? base player's handbook. Oh, oh no, yeah. No, no. Yeah, no. If, yeah, I know what she's talking about. Converting sorcery points into spell slots. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, I'm going to convert my sorcery points yep. to cast greater invisibility. Uh, well, no, you, you can't No, you, you you gain the spell, the spell slot. slot. Yeah, you just have the spell know. slot back. Okay, so I have to wait at this point, right? Till it yes. comes back around to my turn? Got it. Mm -hmm. Understood. Well, even then, be you'd be casting, like, two uh, uh, spells on uh, the same turn, which you wouldn't be able to do. Um, I thought I was getting a turn before and a turn after. Yes, you, you are right now. So if you wanted to, like, uh, just to clarify, if you want to, on, on your first turn, uh, convert your uh, sorcery points into spell slot, you can totally do that. Then on the your next turn, I'm just going to allow it that you, you can cast another spell. Just not two spells on the same turn. Do you, do you understand what I'm putting down here? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just... You got two turns. My... I'm not going to allow two leveled spells on one singular turn. Yeah. It... I will just go ahead and say that people already can't see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever yes. this dies down, I want to see who's the victor. It's not going to die down <laughs> until it's over, Aluya. Yeah, that's what I'm I saying. Mean, I, I got to know who's the winner. I'm Either straight I'm... up going to, like ruin the situation for a lot of people so you don't do it. You, you, uh, do it all right so louia do you end your first turn uh yeah i can't see shit <laughs> okay uh eddie it is now your turn uh you feel disturbance in the forest but can't quite pinpoint it actually does your blind says uh blind sense radiate through uh uh eddie uh, no, I wish it would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but no. Yeah, you just feel disturbance in the force. But, like, but I think this is more of a situation of because Eddie, uh, since he knows that she had cast a spell that were, <laughs> that otherwise would have been, you know, like a, something that would, like, uh, distract your, your brain, mm -hmm. Eddie would have actually initially... Uh, like uh, well, Smokey Eddie's gonna go up five feet for a second as uh, 
regular Eddie does, like, and this is the part where he gets confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he comes back, and you feel Aluya near you. It must be her ghost. You're, you're, you can't <laughs> trust your blind sense on this, buddy. That's impossible. <laughs> so let me see your reaction. What the fuck happens when you switch places with Betty? Like, well, he doesn't switch places. Like again, he's just kind of like walking. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because like, because again, she, she, that being, because like he presumably would have like thought the, uh, uh, the flaming sphere was down. Yep. Which was his main goal to yep. begin with. So like when he gets to like over here, as like uh, Eddie goes up five feet. Mm. Uh. Or I'd actually think about it, he doesn't even necessarily have to do that because Eddie can fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seer cannot. <laughs> well, Seer can, but not without drinking something right now. <laughs> uh, regardless, you may like, be a uh, drug Eddie addict, like, but I'm Eddie the has, drug like, addict here. Over to this area and just like. What? <laughs> yeah, looking. Looking in the direction towards Luya. <laughs> so like, uh, like just like, in fact, we'll go ahead and use his object interaction to kind of like <laughs> poke. <laughs> so just like, doesn't know what's happening, but she just kind of motions to her mouth, one finger, like shh. <laughs> well, Eddie feeling secure. And also still having to deal with the fact that Seer is being a little bitch right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn right! Uh, still bitter about you blue balling me, sir. <laughs> this is all just an elaborate ruse to get payback for blue balling her. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eddie from this location is going to, to Eddie Blast. <laughs> Okay. Let's see it. Uh, let me get back to the, the thing. And too high up. <laughs> I'm making sure we're back at this again. Uh -huh. Damn, 19, which became a 27. He's just like slowly whittling me away, and I just love it. I'm sitting there going like, I'm surprised how well I'm surviving. Yeah, no, I thought it, I was going to be well, dead by now. resistance against everything, it's kind of uh, hard to to get through all of the, the stuff. And mm -hmm. also... Yeah. I mean, yeah, but yeah, well, yeah you're it. not concentrating on anything anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not. But the thing is, I'm just playing with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. with it. Oh, you know what? I guess you don't actually. I guess you don't actually know that it didn't work until yeah. Correct. now. Correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm thinking about it. There you go. All right, that attack number two. God damn, an 18 that became a 26. And I actually am going to like uh, blast you, uh, I guess, as far as I can at this angle into the ceiling. Jeez. I think you're flying right now. Yeah. Correct. All right. Uh, make me a uh, saving throw, uh, 1d6. Oh, sorry, 1d6 blood sheen damage on failure. Saber suck. Well, what saving throw? Uh, dexterity. No, oh, natural one. You know what? Just <laughs> just because it was natural one and I never do this, make it 2d6. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you make the roll. 2d6 blood sheen damage, and you can have it. Uh, animate that up for me, Eddie, as you blast her to the ceiling and we see fissures. 
Well, it's like, uh, well, now that Eddie knows that he can actually take his time now, but also still deal with the problem in front of him, uh, basically, <laughs> basically making Seer think she's winning. Uh, <laughs> Just like, uh, just like, you know, like more smoke within the the fog cloud, like you know, like starts blasting up into Seer, like mm -hmm. pew 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 pew, and like you know, uh, like uh, smashes her into the ceiling. <laughs> okay. Almost like it. Well, the last one, in fact, in the in the shape of a fist. <laughs> Beautiful. Then, uh. And then Eddie will actually, funny enough, uh, he will actually fly back up to meet Seer at the oh. top of the ceiling. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's like a Superman moment. Hell yeah. And uh, I guess also just for kicks, uh, have Smokey Eddie move to the opposite side. Hell yeah. It's like they're both in the air, like uh, like flanking Seer on either side. Hmm. And uh, I think as a bonus action, Eddie is going to. Actually, he will also convert a he will convert a second level spell slot into two sorcery points. Hmm. Okay. As his bonus action. Anything else on your turn? Uh, that'll be it for Eddie. Aluya, it's your turn. Um, taking this information uh, that the little critter friends have told me, and assuming, because she hasn't gotten hit with anything just yet, that whoever poked me was indeed Eddie, uh, mm. she will now... Uh, go invisible because she'll she'll know that Eddie would be able to sense her. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just to and then yeah. she'll move a smidgens. Um so it's six of my points. I have four left. Six of your points for the spell slot in question? Mm-hmm. That's six of my sorcery points. Okay. Actually, it requires seven. Seven? Correct. Okay, yeah. I still have three left. There it go. goes two, three, five, seven, nine. Got it. So fucking weird. Um, but yes, I got you. Um, anything else you're oh. going to be doing? Uh, like, animate the spell up for me. Uh, let me hear what this greater invisibility uh, looks like for uh, Aluya. And that she'll just close her eyes for a moment. Yep. And then just like from the her toes up to her head, uh this well she can see it. The shimmer comes across her and she disappears. Um, there's no way around this little beep boop 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 boop. So she will go Everyone's in the air. Right. Uh but I don't know that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a fire. She can feel behind her. Yep. So. And you hear the woof of fire to your west. Okay. Either. I'll go either straight or somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Um, she'll feel around. Yep. What does she feel around her? Uh, Maybe right I'll up. even take it. A, yep. Well, I'll know to avoid the fire raging behind me, but to... Yep. You feel metal, you feel cloth, you feel stone. And you feel a very fluffy dog head. So. She'll move forward. Okay. Because she's unsure where the fuck she is just yet. Yeah. <laughs> so that's... It currently. Yep. Uh, that will end my turn. Okay. Seer, 
It's your turn. You can't see shit. And all, a majority, if not all, your spells rely on sight. Oh, I'm not worried about that. The thing is, very much, she'll just say, I'm like, you already know I won't win against you. You are someone that is made for battle. I am much more of someone that handles after what happens in battle. But it does not mean I'm a fool, as Seer will drop. And basically, we'll do... I have a lot of things I get away with. So I'm going to use my action to disengage. If I, Well, I can't disengage. I can't see them. Never mind. Mm -hmm. If that you can't see them, right. you can't disengage. Yep, so basically, right. I'll keep that action. I float down yep. and go attack around at ease. Yep, they get attack of opportunity, both of them. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly under, fly straight up this direction. Okay. I'm dragging into a direction where he has not explored, neither did I. Okay. Alright, let me grab out the fog uh, uh, the fog template uh, while you guys are doing this. Uh, remind um, me, I Eddie. Think you got out. I think I got out of it. Technically, it's like a 20 foot. Yeah, oh, or remind me. Radius. radius and uh, 20 foot. Yeah, it was a 20 foot radius. Okay. Thank you. Place it down. Just give me one second. And I believe it was where uh, Seer was before she left. Oh. Oh, place it over. Um, I'm going to delete the other template because it's not applicable anymore. Okay. And let me move it. Um, am I correct with that placement, uh, Eddie? That it was uh, in be uh, the empty space in between Eddie and Eddie right now? Uh, yeah, that's where Eddie was when he cast it. Okay, good. Alright, yeah, you're still within the fog clouds here. Well, the idea is that I would just go one more back. Whoa, holy shit. There you go. Alright, uh, uh, Eddie Blast, um... Uh, 21, uh, 7 force damage, which would be 3, and uh, 24 for the second one. And uh, 14, which would be 7. 3 and 7. So, uh, 10 total. Alright, let me do... Yeah, they're getting you there. And if you wanted yeah, to be technical because you were going down, I would be knocking you into the floor. There you go. I mean, that's still... Regardless, though, that gives me more speed. Yeah, give me... Yeah, just give me dexterity. Well, no, if we're playing by knocking yeah. you into the ceiling, I'm also knocking you into the floor. <laughs> yeah, so when you reach the floor, yeah. Uh, just make me a dexterity save. It'll be 1d6 unless you roll fucking that one. Okay, so that's... No, I mean the saving throw as well, but yeah, it would be four or two damage. I'll convert that later, but basically, I scooch out of the way. Yep. I pull out my tiny family, uh, my tiny servant. Yep. And I basically have them on the shoulder, and as I use my bonus action to mentally command, let me know when they come, let me know where they are by pointing. Okay. Okay, so you have an unseen servant nearby. No, not an unseen servant. A tiny servant with blind tiny sight. Servant. Okay, tiny servant with blind sight. Okay. Look at tiny servant again. And uh, where, where's the location of that little fucker? Oh, it's just I would. It's tiny, so I I was carrying the thing the whole okay. time. Okay. Yeah. So in your space. Gotcha. 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 It has 4 HP, it could literally die. But the idea is that what I'll do, as my hasted action, yep. I float back into the fog cloud, okay. I use my action to chuck a dagger to make it sound like the noise came that way, and I float back it, and just okay. wait. Alright. Um, yeah, because... Yeah, uh, the extent of Eddie's blind sight is uh, 5 feet, is that correct, Eddie? It, it's 10 feet. 
10 feet. 10 feet, you know, uh, the direction was uh, north. You can't see through Equinite Eddy, which would be in the main chamber, so that would be an uh, effective uh, tactic. Um, I'm going to have to say uh, Deception versus Insight. Unless uh, there's any points I missed here. I feel like that's uh, a fair... I wouldn't be body position. language reading. It'd be more like Perception, since they are basically trying to hear noises. Yeah, but it's trying to discern. Like, uh, it... Oh. Yeah, I guess you could make, like, uh, an argument for perception, but I'm thinking more of, uh, it is the sound correct? You understand what I mean? Or actually, investigation might also work out as well. Um, let me double check. Yeah, true intent of a creature, such as while well, searching out a light. Yep, okay, yeah. So you are correct with that. Well, like, body language is just, like, one way you can insight something, but you yeah. can also insight a situation. <laughs> yeah, both of them are wisdom-based, uh, or, no, uh, insight's wisdom-based, investigation's intelligence. Um, I would say investigation is more fitting in this scenario. Because, uh, what you are doing is, uh, you're, you're trying to mislead him with a, uh, clue, and he needs to discern the truth of it. Okay. There wasn't going to be uh, much of a difference between the roles. Yeah. Okay. It uh, also means that Louis is not safe if they walk through. <laughs> what's the deception from Seer? Oh, let me roll. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah. Oh Jesus! With the two, <laughs> God damn it! Um, you nearly got tricked there, Eddie. Uh, just to tell the rolls quick, deception is two, investigation seven. Um, you nearly got tricked there, Eddie. That dagger really did sound like Seer going through the hallway, but you you know better. Like, uh, <laughs> like you you remember vividly that the monster said, "If you come back, we will fight." There is no way like in hell. would be that dumb, would she? Yeah. <laughs> she would not go that way, but it is a location she would want to lead you guys. Anything else here? Um, Only thing I might do is that, as the rest of my movement, if there's just curtain here, I probably would float right around the corner. Okay. Leaving my tiny servant. I'm just watching where he points, and then I'll know. Yep. So. Um, actually, what's your total movement? A lot. I have haste. Okay. So it is more than... Well, you need to specify how much you're using, because that might be relevant. <laughs> hmm. Um, well, if as you far remember... as, like, how far you plan to go. Yeah. Just around the corner, really. That's all I... Okay. Well, yeah, it, it, exactly. yeah, it's still within the 30, it's just a little past the 30 foot range, so you're, you're totally cool. If you have mm -hmm. more than uh, your regular lotted movement. Eddie, is your turn, it looks like a sleight of hand uh, deception uh, to mislead you as a foot, and you are better than that. But the rabbit is running away, what will the hunter do? Also, I might be misremembering. Uh, yes, sir. So feel free to correct me, Seer. But uh, didn't you didn't you cast Milf's Acid Arrow at level three? I did, but the Tiny Servant was something I cast way long ago. It only lasts eight hours. That's what I was saying. Didn't we cast? I cast it when we had our last long rest. Oh, and we've yep. been traveling for some time. <laughs> I had to double check. I forgot. Time's weird here. We're not moving a lot, and I feel like time's moving so weird. That's me. Fair enough. Regardless, though, I'll still be by the corner. So maybe no yep. tiny servant then. I misremembered. No, it was perfectly fine. I was just like, like I was just like sitting here in my branch, just like wait. <laughs> <laughs> but, I just know I cast Tiny Servant 
the time we leveled up. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, let's keep things moving along. We're uh, a little past the session, and I want to see a resolution before we end. So, well, in mm. which case, like, uh, yep. the, uh, it's like, uh, we'll naturally, like, uh, fly over. <laughs> <laughs> Your tiny servant is, well, even if it, like, whether it was there or not, is tiny sized. Uh, yeah. So well, the big pass. thing is I'm pull I want to pull Eddie out of the smoke. That's the key thing. There you go. Yep. Yep. It's like uh, Eddie says hello. <laughs> hello. Hey, little dude. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Eddie's going to be a bitch. He's going to cast Fog Cloud again. Okay. Oh, you I figured as much that ah, went through my head. Hey. Uh, I'll move the Fog Cloud is a level one spell, Seer. I know, <laughs> but I didn't think it's for me to use it. I'm All aware, right. but that's what I'm annoyed by. I was hoping to be like, oh yeah, blood thirsty battle back and forth. Where, and it's where, like, no Fog Cloud. Go like, damn where, it. Where's the Fog Cloud? Is it on Seer? You know, it's going to be centered on, on Eddie again. Okay. So Leah sees more now, and suddenly they're like, "Where the fuck?" All right. Oh well, my probably god! Probably in the direction of that big fog cloud over there. <laughs> what? I'm so annoyed. I'm so they're like. I, I kind of want to imagine make... I actually followed him because that's more funny to imagine. So, it's like uh, the Peanuts character with the smoke cloud. It's just. <laughs> Although, more specifically, just to make sure everything's above board here, I'm casting that fog cloud. Uh, as a bonus action with, uh, yep. with Quicken spell. <laughs> yep, makes sense. This is going to be like a Tom and Jerry situation where it's like, I'm just going to keep running, and hopefully Eddie gets stopped by things that keep trying to kill him instead of me. At the end of the day, I'm just happy a lot of resources in general are being used. Well, most of mine are going to be uh, recoverable. Hers are not. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. It's very much like I was trying to basically outlast. So I wasn't trying to win combat. My whole goal was to be like, Eddie, they're dead. Okay. So uh, Eldritch Blast with your main action, Eddie. Uh, yep, sorry. This yep. Uh, That's perfectly fine. Making sure things are being ticked. Oh off. no, Eddie! I see that orb. I'm scared now. Don't push me in it. <laughs> that orb. Well, right now we're both in the air, so I can't. Yet. No. <laughs> Not yet. I can see uh, partial of Smoky Ed, right? Yeah. Oh, actually, no. He's within the fog cloud. Okay. Uh, making sure everything is. You see, well, two Smoky Eddie was in the cloud. Within thought... the fog cloud. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, I see it now. I, okay, you, you're pretty sure Eddie got fat. Like, really fat. <laughs> Needs to lose some weight. <laughs> okay, 23 is a hit. Three. It's just a very slow death. I honestly think we could speed this along. <laughs> so we'll do this. Yeah. 11... <laughs> yep, 14. Then the 14 on this. Yep, 14 is a miss. And then <clears throat> Smoky Eddie is going to. So, in fact, it. Uh, in fact, it Can will we move have... it as a bonus action if you already burned it? Oh no, that's the thing. That's the that the bonus action is to teleport. It's a free action yep. to move it. <laughs> yep. Ah, okay. There and in go. fact, it will have some fun here. It's going to move behind you again. <laughs> there you go. God, this is why I knew I was gonna die. But I'm so if Eluia didn't have Dimension Door, we know for a fact she would have died. <laughs> uh, lo yeah. Well, about not round necessarily four. because again, you did uncast flaming sphere eddie was going to go make his way over to the door until he realized that aluya was fine mm. yeah I mean, but I get again that. that happened around round four that would have been four saving throws and uh spoiler alert uh two additional die each round so by that point four six eight uh 
I don't 10 probably yeah. has absorb elements or not. Uh, hopefully. Um, but uh, 10d6. No, no. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of damage by then. But regardless, though, Eddie, do your worst. Yes. Let's see resolution. Well, I mean, that's the end of my turn. That was my yep. action bonus action. Oh. Aluya. Aluya, are you doing anything? Uh, now that I've noticed the, the moving cloud <laughs> and eyes in front of me, I'm assuming that the fight has now shifted. I'm going to stay where I can see. Yeah. Because, uh, right, it comes up to here, right? Yes. Okay. The start yeah, of uh, the junction chamber is uh, where the fog cloud uh, ends. Yeah, I'm going to stay... You know what? Fuck it. Um, let's move up a little, just in case. You get a lot of usage out of fog cloud this episode. <laughs> oh. I'm going to feel... Is there a wall to my left? It's exactly how you see it. Um, there is uh, no wall. Now you're at the okay. wall. Okay. And honestly, I'm fairly certain you're out of... Yep, you're out of the fog cloud. Because it's a radius. Still? Okay. Yep. That's fine. Well, that, that's an empty pocket within the fog cloud there. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to stay there. Okay. Sierra, it's your turn. What do you do? I'm going to be a bitch. Yep. And very much do the same song and dance. We're basically pulling Eddie along for a ride. Okay. Two attack of opportunities as they float off basically two in two directions this way. Well, it's one, but yeah, I got gotcha. you. Well, it, it winds up becoming two attacks because it's yeah. felt mm, it's I got gotcha. you. Well, sorry, like, uh, where specifically do you go? <laughs> I'm trying to go keep deeper into the hallway. Uh, all right, I just needed to be. I just needed to be sure. Uh, for what it's worth, if I manage to still like a, hit you like once or twice, you would be knocking into this wall first. Uh, mm. Oh no! I'm also that would also push me into the possible. Um, if I fall into the orb, that would fucking suck. Yep. Um, how high is the flames from the orb? Because that also would determine what would happen to. Yeah, like hit first. Let's see if that even happens. Yeah, and just to specify oh, what oh, she's uh, talking Eddie about, right um, they're, 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 the party is north of where the fire orb was, which was in the south. This one is uh, ice crystal with a frost uh, permeating off of it, a uh, hoarfrost, essentially. That's how I want to check, because I might get pushed into that if it's not a good scenario. Oh, shit. Okay. Because I flew this way, and as I try to fly off, it would push me in the direction. Yeah, I assume you're pushing her into the orb then. Uh, that that sounds like the idea to like uh, possibly make this go faster. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Let's do it. Uh, constitution saving throw. Uh, with that, again, it's 18. Oh my god, natural one. Again, and I'm never going to do this again, just because it's very specific to the situation. I just need to stress, uh, natural ones do not affect the damage of the saving throw. But in these two situations, I thought it would be more fun just to add a little spice to this. The original damage I was going to have you do, considering where this uh, fire and where this frost is coming from, It'd be the equivalent of a uh, essentially a fireball, 66. With I your mean, with your natural one, unless you have anything to go against that. I don't. I just want to end in the glorious way of being like something. 12d6 damage, please. Hold. I'm gonna be honest, Gray. The number, if I rolled every single die one at a one, so if all of them were ones, I'd still possibly die but we're gonna find out if i roll less than 20 damage i might yeah. still be alive well i mean like you still take only half of it 
Is I'm 12 resist? 6 is what you said? Take the entire thing, yes. Oh, yeah, but plus it's half. Yes, so 12 d6. 22. I'm very bad. Yeah, 44. Half is 22. Um, Eddie, describe your attack. Uh, 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 <laughs> fucking Seer, you can describe your death. Um, I'll type you something while Eddie describes yeah. how he does the last. Well, describe her down. It wouldn't automatically kill her. <laughs> I don't think. I'm sorry, what was that, Eddie? Oh, I was saying, like, how it would down her, but uh, that's not nearly enough to kill her. <laughs> I know, but she is dead. All right, oh. then here's what happens because I just want to s speed it up. Eddie, here's what happens. You launch Seer into this orb and their natural like flame body starts to just like get slowly snuffed out as you just see their hair reduce. The veins of them just slowly become hardened. But the thing you'll notice, instead of it being like, you know, them falling apart, it seems as if suddenly they start to turn more into a silvery sh shape. They start to turn into a form that is similar to, if you've seen the T, you know, the Terminator series with the liquid. Mm -hmm. They turn into this like silver um, bodied being that just slowly shatters into pieces as they land all over the ground around this orb. All right. And with that, we're going to end combat. No experience. <laughs> Not fucking with you. Oh. Um, Eddie, Aluya, uh, give yourselves both 500 EXP. Uh, uh, Seer, 250. Yes, ma'am. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Seer is dead. Okay. Yep. <laughs> A seer is dead. Two fifty. Sad. Makes sense though. Um. You said yes. three fifty. No, uh, five hundred for both oh. you and uh, Eddie. That just add five hundred onto your sheet. Uh, seer two fifty. Um, Eddie, any last words as we finish off here? It's like, uh, as he's probably aware of the fact that uh, that didn't, like, uh, end how normally when he, when Eddie attacks something, you know, like, a winds up being. He's actually going to be a little less chill as he says this. Where is the little dude? <laughs> That's a good ender, and that's where we'll end our session for today. Thank you guys so much. This has been House Common Blood. The intro and outro music is Oh My Dog by Savick. And any other music and sound effects used in the episode are royalty free. Credits can be found in the episode description. Please review us on whatever podcast listening app you happen to be using. And if you like us, tell other people. Word of mouth is the best way for us to grow. Thank you for joining us. Stay connected.